this is Lisa for I Am Radio and we're having a chat today with Lillian Kennedy. Um, I've known Lillian since um, the beginning of Five Rights when I went along to a meeting um, at the Kirkcaldy Galleries and Lillian's always been a friendly and gorgeous face to see <laughs> at all of the events and she's a wonderful person to speak to. So this is in conversation with Lillian. Hi. Hi, yeah. Hi. <laughs> really nice to see you. You too, you too. Yeah, I really appreciate what you've been doing with Five Rights as well. Oh, it's I've, lovely. I love it. I am, I'm so honoured that you you guys asked me to mm-hmm. do the workshop organiser bit of it and I get to do the fun bits. And <laughs> um, and it was my first time as a, an MC um, at Loch Gailey a couple of weeks ago. I but thought the room at Loch Gailey was beautiful. Yes. And, and the performances were all wonderful. I was just delighted to yeah, be there. Yeah, and I've learned a lot from, from Lillian about about MC and performing because oh. Lillian has this amazing talent of getting up in front of an audience without any idea about what she's going to do. And it's just, it's whether it's a song, whether it's poetry, whether it's magic, it just, it just absolutely happens. And I found that when I was emceeing at Little Gaelic, it was mm-hmm. the first time I'd done it. So, you know, I planned it all, wrote it all out, you know, mm-hmm. knowing I would never need the notes because these things yeah. happen. Um, and I ended up, <laughs> um, the performers were that enjoying what they were doing. I just let it be what it was. Yeah. And it was great. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's, it's a good thing. It's just recognise really all that you're trying to do is be as present as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, and the more present we are in ourselves, mm-hmm. then the more what we do, we call it, if you're an actor, you call it improvising. Mm-hmm. But if you just call it being alive, it's useful, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just trust that your own well-being and, and your breath and your mind can all function together. Then yeah. it's extraordinary what can happen. Yeah. Because in my understanding of it, you also have, we all have, who are creative people, mm-hmm. we all have a muse that's with us. Mm-hmm. Whether that you call that muse your guardian angel or your, mm-hmm. or your channeling beings from mm-hmm. another world, or whether you're just activating the mm-hmm. other side of your brain, uh-huh. too, because that thing about the left hand side and the right and the right hand yeah. side of the brain have different functions mm-hmm. when they're both moving together. It's uh-huh. like when they, it's not the DNA, but that thing where the, the what do you call it when there's the the, 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 the caduceus, like the caduceus snakes, yeah. you know the. The, the neurons, the core yeah. of you is the left hand connecting with the right hand, mm-hmm. the masculine connecting with the feminine. Mm-hmm. And when that's really happening, then mm-hmm. all you need to do is just allow yourself to enjoy being where you are yeah. and love the people that you're looking at and all sorts of things can happen. Yeah, and not think about it too much, no. you know, because if you're... I mean, I also carry with me, you know, usually when I'm going anywhere, mm-hmm. I will carry with me poetry or notes just in case, you know, mm-hmm. when I have to talk uh-huh. about other people, I try to stick with notes if I've not uh-huh. got a lot of nonsense in my head about mm-hmm. who they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, I, I think the quality of connected improvising is one of the most important things that I've learned how to do. Mm-hmm. It's about allowing my first thought through and just letting it through. Mm-hmm. But I did do quite a lot of work on cleaning up my first thoughts. <laughs> how, how, did, how did that go? <laughs> Because I'm still working on that. <laughs> well, I do a thing called co-counselling uh-huh. with a group of people called Co-Counselling International. Mm-hmm. And I also teach it. So mm-hmm. you learn how to be both client and counsellor in this process. Mm-hmm. So to be able to give yourself interventions. So when you notice that you're blocked about something, yeah. then you can do a session with someone. Yeah. And just getting good attention means that you will share mm-hmm. about yourself mm-hmm. because you've got someone who's giving you present time consciousness. Yeah. You know? So you can go, you can learn how to go into very deep areas of yourself. I started doing it because I was working with a group of people called Roughcast Music Theatre in Glasgow uh-huh. in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And two of the actors in the company, I thought, what are you doing? You've learned how to do something I'm really interested in. Because it didn't matter what emotion they were asked to connect with, they did it really fast and they never got lost in it. They came back out again really fast because often if you've got to go into a deep place as an actor, 
Because acting's not about putting on masks, it's about taking them off. Mm -hmm. It's about allowing your insides to connect with the character Cause, and show. Because you, 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 you look at acting almost from the outside and you think, actually, it's putting on masks, but it's, what you're saying, it's exactly the opposite. Yes. yes. Misconception. If you've yeah. really got to understand the character and yeah. allow where that character connects with you mm -hmm. to come through. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you get what we would call acting mm -hmm. rather than someone believable in front of you, uh -huh. you know? and that believability comes from being able to connect the character with the core of your own being mm -hmm. and allow it to be seen mm -hmm. and some people cannot do that they defend themselves against mm -hmm. what's meant to be seen on stage mm -hmm. it can be quite exposing I would imagine it is it, you know especially if it's a raw emotion that mm -hmm touches something within you that's very personal yes it can be a little bit too close mm -hmm. and so i asked them what are you doing because mm -hmm. whatever it is is a missing part of an acting course mm -hmm. and they said we're co-counselors we're with co-counseling international uh -huh. and they offered me the opportunity to do a fundamentals of co-counseling mm -hmm. and i got to do it free because uh -huh. it was being done in a drugs rehabilitation center in glasgow by an American called Larry Butler, uh -huh. who was here having escaped the Vietnam War, and he wanted to create a co-counselling group for himself, mm -hmm. because it's a peer group. Mm -hmm. So once you've actually done the 40 hours mm -hmm. of training, mm -hmm. then you're integrated with Co-Counselling International, which is actually an international organisation. So if you're walking um, on holiday in Brazil, there's possibly a group yes. there that you can yes. source. Yes. For help, support, whatever you may need. I would need to check out. But it, but <laughs> <laughs> I know there's definitely one in Germany, there's one in Holland, uh -huh. there's one in New Zealand, there's one in uh, Ireland, there's one mm -hmm. in Connecticut. That there's Where there are people who'll do it, mm -hmm. then a small group grows. Uh -huh. um, and we had the Scottish gathering. Mm, we're not being quite accurate about that. We had the European International Gathering in Scotland last year. We wow. had it in Gartmoor House, uh -huh. which is a beautiful place mm -hmm. in the Trossachs, mm -hmm. near Aberfoyle. Mm -hmm. And Gartmoor is a community venture. It's, um, I can't remember, what do you call these things when, you, when it's a, a not-for-profit organisation? There was a, a new well, term for it. They like, keep inventing new terms. Yeah, definitely. The, I'm thinking community <laughs> collective. Social, but, a so social enterprise. enterprise. Oh, yeah, that's the buzzword. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a social <laughs> enterprise run by somebody who runs a lot of hotels mm -hmm. in Scotland. It's his give back. Mm -hmm. And it's an old mansion, mm -hmm. which is beautifully laid out for having conferences. And mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed it a lot. It's It's got a lot of... Um, Mm -hmm. old grandeur about it it's mm -hmm. still bits of it that are needing very much repaired but it's got beautiful grounds in a way I think it's when you go to an old building there's almost something you know quite magical mm. about you know because you're almost going back in time to that well, for time for me it was also yeah. very interesting because Gatmore House is near the Fairy Hill in, in Aberfyll yes I've been there and the energy field of the whole area is it's stunning. Alive and wild. Yeah, because I, I, I remember going going up there during a very difficult time in my life. Mm -hmm. And I remember taking that walk up and finding the tree that's mm -hmm. adorned before all the jewels, all mm -hmm. the crystals. The, and there was just, I don't know what happened to me when I went up mm -hmm. that hill and then came down again, but something did happen. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely transformational. Yeah. The it's energy. A very powerful the energy. The side. energy, yeah. yeah. So I was pleased to be able to take people from all over the world there because it's also my early stamping ground. I was born in mm -hmm. Stirling. Actually, I was born in Airthrey Castle, oh, which, yeah. is, which is now part of Stirling University. Oh, wow. But Airthrey Castle was a maternity home oh, when I was okay. a child. Not too far from a standing stone that's also in the grounds of Airthrey Castle. Uh -huh. It was late, very, very much later in my life when I thought, that's probably significant, but <laughs> yeah, because you we've you, spoken very briefly about standing stones before, and I, mm -hmm. I know how much they mean to you. Yeah, you know, not just symbolically mm -hmm. and so the, in the heart. The relationship between 
the Trossachs and myself's very strong. My mother was born in Callander, mm-hmm. and we lived in Callander when I was very young. Mm-hmm. And then we moved to Stirling, but we visited. My father did neither drink nor smoke, mm-hmm. but he was he early had transport because he was the local chimney sweep. <laughs> and he used to clean out the van at the weekends and take us to visit mm-hmm. my grandfather. And sometimes we did that via the Trossachs, uh-huh. and up over the Duke's Pass, mm-hmm. or to the Lake of Menteith. Mm-hmm. So it's in my bones. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that it's really difficult, if it's there for you, um, to understand how different that makes you from someone that's been brought up in a city. This difference is enormous mm-hmm. because of the connectedness with the, with the wild of the earth, mm-hmm. with the, the bones of the earth, which are the stones and the... Mm-hmm. The so if, blood of the earth. Which is the so if you like, nature is almost giving you, instead of the, the structure of the buildings and the you know the hierarchy, if you like, mm-hmm. in a city, which is more prominent, mm-hmm. you had the the trees yes. and nature yes. and the wildness mm-hmm. all around you. Roots that and gave mountains you that, and yeah. waterfalls and just a very strong sense of mm-hmm. the, in my view, the peopled nature mm-hmm. of the area as well because Mm -hmm. the unseen world is fully present in a way that was actually interesting to me a few years ago I I met someone from New Zealand called Ojaswin Kingi Davis and Ojaswin is a Maori who has been trained in a variety of different spiritual disciplines Uh he works with a man called Shin Shiva but he is a Maori Mm-hmm. And his connection with the land is as deep oh, as it goes because they've never lost it. No. It's never been trained out of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was completely astounded mm-hmm. at how alive the west coast of Scotland is. Mm-hmm. When I met him, I met him in uh, Glasgow, but mm-hmm. we went and spent time in the la- in the grounds of Lunga Estate, which mm-hmm. belongs to. Mm-hmm. It'll come back to me. <laughs> Someone. <laughs> Someone. Um, and Lunga Estate has a clouty tree on it as well. Mm-hmm. One of the, which is what you call the tree at the top of, of the fairy hill, mm-hmm. a clouty tree. It's where votive offerings are left uh, to the fairy world. Yeah. Um, and there's a live clouty tree that's been active mm-hmm. and never been disactivated as it were uh-huh. on the, the grounds of Colin Lindsay McDougall mm-hmm. and so there was a course that mm-hmm. was there that a Jasmine was participating uh-huh. in which also had a lot of people who wanted to spend time outside mm-hmm. and were interested the, the Druid people from Ireland were mm-hmm. there there were a lot of different people from all over the world mm-hmm. who are channelers of nature spirits or mm-hmm. moving with the earth in a completely different way. Mm-hmm. And oh, Jasmine was just blown away by how alive it was. And I said to him, well, that's because a lot of us have been doing a lot of work over the last 30 years. Yeah, to keep so it alive. So that the nature spirits are actually prepared to speak to us again. Mm-hmm. Because when I first of all got engaged with it and started responding to what I heard trees doing, they were really quite shocked that somebody was responding. Well, you, you know, I've not been very kind to nature, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of, you know, getting rid of it for houses, mm-hmm. getting rid of it, you know, moving the animals off. The yeah. animals now think that, the deer now thinks the Cody's their living area. Mm-hmm. And it is their living area because we've taken it. Mm-hmm. We've taken it away from them. Yeah. So. So I'm, I'm aware that I kind of went in a wander there, and I'm not quite sure whether or not I want to wander back again, mm-hmm. which is to do with improvising uh-huh. and to do with co-counselling mm-hmm. and the nature of being in touch with yourself and mm-hmm. how you get rid of the blockages. Mm-hmm. I think I had the advantage of having been brought up by a very beautiful family, mm-hmm. but even they didn't understand how connected I was with nature. It's a very individual journey. Yes. And so for me, that was, it was important when I found these people in the acting world that were doing something that I could see was not false, Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And this was important for me. Because you felt it. Yes. Um, that, that I learned then co-counselling. Mm-hmm. And I also 